Welcome okay. to our Sunday afternoon question okay. and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. I have a tough question for you. I have three verses that I'd like you to look at. The first one is Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Luke 10, 18 says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. The second verse is Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Revelation 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And the last verse, Revelation 9, verse 1. Revelation 9, 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So I wonder if May 21, 2011 actually was when Satan had war with Michael the archangel, he was cast out of heaven, that maybe Christ bound Satan at the cross but did not cast him out of heaven, knowing that Satan had a short time, which makes sense why this world is just so out of control now. Perhaps God is gathering Satan, Gagog, and Magog for the Battle of Armageddon. I have a lot more verses. To well, learn. let's stop you there, and I'd like to comment on what you're saying. Now, one thing, the words are related. The word for lightning is strong 796. And that word is astrape, and it comes from 797, 797, which is astrapeto. That's where the word lightning comes from. And 797 is a word that means lighten or shine. So it's not coming from 792, which is the word star, aster. Aster. You can even hear 796 sounds more similar to 797 than it does to 792. And as far as the star falling, in order to understand when Satan fell, that's really the question. When did Satan fall from heaven? Did it happen as we have understood at the cross, or could it have happened at some other point? such as May 21. Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and look at the context where God speaks of Satan falling. And I'm going to start reading from verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And so there is Satan in the form of this great red dragon, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So, so far we have the picture, here's this woman who we could understand is representing the true believers, about to give birth, and Satan assaults. He comes with a third part of the stars. Now, we might relate that to the third part of the stars as identifying with the church. And so that could tie into the time of the end, because we know the third part came under the judgment of God, pointing to the falling away of the church and then God's wrath falling upon them. But it goes on to say, verse 5, and the question is, who is this child and what time is this in history? And as she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, the man-child could be anybody. Of course, we suspect it's the Lord Jesus Christ because Christ was born of a woman into the world and Mary would be a picture of the true believers. The woman here is typified by Mary who brings the Lord Jesus into the world. But as we look up the language that the man-child was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, it's confirmed because that language applies to Jesus only. We could go to the Psalms 
Psalm 2 and other scriptures in Revelation that show that when the statement concerning ruling with a rod of iron is something that can only apply to Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is the man-child that the woman brought forth, and he is born into the world. Then it says in the second part of verse 5, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, when did that take place in history? We read in the Gospels that Christ was born into the world. He lived amongst men for a period of years, finally went about his ministry, which concluded with going to the cross and the resurrection on that early Sunday morning. And then he ascended 40 days later after his resurrection into heaven. And that fits Revelation 12, verse 4. The third part of stars is a reference to the corporate church of Israel. It's a reference to national Israel, and they're falling away, not the church at the end of time. And once we understand that, then the whole passage falls into place and verse after verse, we can see how it all fits. We can't make this passage fitting with our time or the time of the Great Tribulation. You just can't make this passage fit the Great Tribulation and Judgment Day. Well, then it says in verse 6, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Now, the woman has fled into the wilderness for the time, times and a half. The 1,203 score days is mentioned in Revelation 11 as the time period that the two witnesses prophesied. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,203 score days clothed in sackcloth the identical period of time, and we understand the period of the two witnesses prophesying that 1,203 score days was the New Testament church age, and that fits perfectly with what's taken place in Revelation 12 with the man-child being caught up to heaven. Then what follows? The woman flees into the wilderness 1260 days for the church age, the period of her prophecy. The two witnesses and the woman are one and the same. So everything is in harmony and fits perfectly in the Bible as far as we've understood it. Then it says in verse 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Now, God has given us one picture of the woman extending for the period of her ministry, and now he's going back to look in particular at the dragon. And so he tells us that the dragon's cast out. And then verse 10, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell on them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And that happened as soon as the man-child was caught up, the dragon took pursuit of the woman. And it says in verse 14, And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. And again, that would agree with the 1,203 score days. She fled into the wilderness to the place prepared of God. 
it's a synonymous verse. Only God is using time, times, and a half to refer to the 1260 days. And then the serpent casts out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman and so forth. And then the earth opens her mouth to help the woman to swallow up the flood. And when we go verse by verse through this chapter, we see that the casting out of Satan was at the point of the cross. When Michael, who is the Lord Jesus, cast him out of heaven, it was at the point of the cross. It was at the point when Jesus bound the strong man. Keep in mind, you cannot plunder the strong man's house until you bind him. So you cannot have a church age and gather in the first fruits. You cannot have the salvation of a great multitude during the second part of the Great Tribulation if Satan has not been bound as yet. And that's what Revelation 20 is talking about, the binding of Satan, the point of Satan's binding. If Satan were loosed on May 21, 2011, if that's when he's cast out of heaven because they're equivalent, well, when he was cast out, he was bound. And yeah, so I don't know how even you could fit in May 21, 2011 for his binding. Where would you have his binding? Because they are equivalent ideas. And so it, it just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. Now, when we look at the star, at the star in Revelation 9, and we understand that it is a reference to Christ, well, then we have harmony. As it says in Revelation 9, verse 1, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And that star is Jesus. Jesus is always the one. He's the keeper of the key. And yes, within the Godhead, maybe God gives it to the Son, but still it's God's key. He possesses the key to life and death. As it says earlier in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. God is always the one that opens up the pit of hell to cast Satan in or to loose him and who opens doors and shut doors. God has the key. Christ has the key.